Hi, my name is Piotr and uh, I'll be talking about uh, how Scylla DB integrates with WebAssembly, uh, including current use cases and uh, future plans. Uh, I work on uh, Scylla core daily and lately I also started leading and maintaining the Scylla Rust driver project uh, and I also uh, worked on WebAssembly integration, kind of like a weekend project. Uh, let's start by a short introduction to WebAssembly. Uh, WebAssembly is a format for executable code designed first and foremost to be portable and embeddable. Uh, as it's, uh, its name suggests, uh, it's a good fit for web applications, but not only that. Uh, it's generally a good choice for an embedded language, uh, especially that it's also quite fast. Uh, one of WebAssembly's core features is isolation. Uh, each module is executed uh, in a sandboxed environment, uh, separate from the host, uh, the host application. Uh, and such a limited trust environment is really desired for an embedded language because uh, it vastly reduces the risk of somebody running malicious code from within your project. Uh, WASM uh, is a binary format, but it also specifies a human-readable text format uh, called WebAssembly. Uh, text format uh, or what. Uh, in order to integrate WebAssembly into a project, uh, one needs to pick an engine to use. Uh, the most popular one is Google's V8, uh, implemented in C++, uh, with support for JavaScript and a very, very rich feature set. Uh, it's unfortunately also quite heavy and not very easy to integrate with uh, asynchronous frameworks like Sistar which is a building block of Scylla. Uh, on the other side of this slide is Wasm Time, uh, a smaller, but not small, uh, project uh, implemented in Rust. Uh, it only supports WebAssembly, no JavaScript, which also makes it uh, more lightweight. Uh, and it has uh, good support for asynchronous environments and has C++ bindings, which makes it a good fit uh, for uh, injecting into Scylla. Uh, for a proof-of-concept implementation in Scylla, uh, Wasm Time was used uh, due to being less heavyweight than V8 uh, and for uh, having more potential for being async-friendly. Uh, right now we simply use the existing C++ bindings provided by Wasm Time, but we already have it uh, in our roadmap to implement this whole integration layer in Rust and then compile it directly into Scylla. So, uh, how would one create a WebAssembly program? Uh, first of all, uh, modules can be coded directly in WebAssembly text format. Uh, it's not the most convenient way, uh, at least for me, due to WASP's uh, limited type system and uh, specific syntax, and uh, mm, yeah, lots of parentheses, but it's of course possible. Uh, all you need in, in this case is a text editor and you're done. Uh, C or C++ enthusiasts can compile their language of choice to WASM uh, with the Clang compiler. Uh, the binary interface is well defined and the resulting binaries are uh, also quite well optimized. Uh, underneath the code is compiled to WebAssembly with the use of LLVM representation, uh, which mm, makes many optimizations possible. Uh, Rust also has the capability of producing WASM output in its ecosystem uh, and a WASM32 target uh, is already supported in the official build toolchain Cargo. And then there's assembly script, uh, which is a TypeScript-like language which compiles directly to WebAssembly. Uh, assembly script is especially nice for quick experiments because, well, it's, it's a scripting language. Uh, it's also the only language that was actually invented and designed with WebAssembly as a compilation target in mind. Uh, what do we need WebAssembly for? Uh, our first use case inside Scylla is user-defined functions, also known as UDF. Uh, it's a CQL feature that allows defining a function in a given language and then using this function when querying the database. Uh, the function will be applied on the arguments by the database itself and only then sent to the user. Uh, it's also possible to express nested calls and other more complex operations with UDF, uh, as you can see on the slide. Uh, so user-defined functions are already cool, but their most important purpose is enabling user-defined aggregates. 
Uh, these are custom accumulators which combine data from multiple rows uh, from the database into potentially complex outputs. Uh, User-defined aggregates consist of uh, two functions, uh, one for accumulating the result for each argument uh, and one for finalizing the result and uh, transforming it to the output type. Uh, on this uh, slide you can see an example of an aggregate that computes the average length of all requested strings. Uh, one function accumulates partial results by storing the total sum of all lengths and total number of strings, uh, and the finalizing function divides one by the other in order to return the result. Uh, and in this case, this result is uh, in a form of an already rendered text. Uh, as you can see, mm, the potential here uh, is quite large. Uh, User-defined aggregates uh, allow uh, using the database queries in a more powerful way. Uh, for instance, gathering complex statistics or transforming whole partitions into different formats and so on. Uh, how to create a user-defined function in WebAssembly? Uh, first, we need to write or compile a function to wasm text format. Uh, then the function body is simply registered in a SQL statement called create function and that's it. And note that the Declared language here is XWASM, which stands for Experimental WASM. Uh, that's because support for this language is currently still experimental in Scylla. Uh, the exact interface for expressing types and return values, uh, including handling null values, is kind of out of scope for this lightning talk, but uh, there's a design document I recommend everyone to read, explaining in all the specific choices. Uh, and WASM-powered user-defined functions are are already available in experimental mode in Scylla, so don't hesitate and spin a test cluster and try it out. Uh, here's how you can set, uh, set your nodes up to enable uh, experimental features, including WebAssembly, for user-defined functions. Thanks. I encourage everyone to, um, to stay in touch and feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions related to WebAssembly.